Welcome to part two. This is the one where I'm going to show you DaVinci Resolve. So if you need to use Windows Video Editor, check the description or there might be a pop-up on your screen to go to the previous video. So for this one, we're going to show you how to stop animation, do stop animation in DaVinci Resolve. And it's a bit trickier because it's a bit more powerful, but it, there is some nice aspects to it, especially with add in stuff over top or add in sounds and stuff titles it's a lot simpler that way so i'm going to switch to my screen and this time we're going to open davinci And it might take a second to open. It's a bigger application. I will say if you're having trouble opening this on your computer, then just use video editor because this is larger and it's not as stable on laptops. So um, you're just gonna double click on title project. And similar to Windows Video Editor, it's kind of the same idea. You have your media area, you have your timeline or your storyboard, and then you have your playback. This has more tabs on the bottom to do a whole bunch of stuff. There's a full audio editor and color changer. You don't need to worry about that. Fusion is 3D effects. For you, all you need to do is you need to look at cut, edit, and deliver. So these are kind of the three s tabs you'll use. Now before you even add anything, you want to set up your project. So you're going to go up to File, Settings. Again, 720p, it's already set there. But the trick that you need to change here is frames per second. So as you can see, we can't actually um, we can't actually change the frames per second to be ten like we want. You can change the playback, but the playback just changes what this plays at. But once you actually export it, it's going to be the timeline. So what you need to do here is you need to actually pick say 18 or 24 and then we'll make instead of one frame or 0.1 second we'll make the photos a different frame count so if you do 24 and you pick um, two frames per picture that means that it'll be it'll take 12 frame or it'll take 12 pictures per second because there's 24 frames and each one's worth two so essentially if you do two you divide this by two and that's your frames per second so 18 will give you 9 24 will give you 12 you can pick either one I'm gonna pick 18 so you're gonna change the playback to match it and you're gonna hit save once you've done that just like Windows video editor you're gonna find your photos and you're gonna drag them in here and then again, these should be in order. And in this case, it actually looks like they're not. So you can play around with this. If you go to details, you can sort by clip name and that'll help. Actually, I think if you switch to edit. Yeah, here you go. If you switch to edit, they're in order. So now in edit, you're going to select all of your photos here, and you can do control A as well, and then you're just going to drag them over to the timeline. And you're going to see them appear as you're dragging, and you're just going to drag them to the start here and then let go. Now you can see you have them all, and just like last time, it's just a very slow 3 second or 4 second frame. Actually 5 seconds this time. So what we need to do is we're going to select all again. So you're going to click in here and then you're going to go to control A. And this time you need to right click and go to change clip duration. And we could do time, but the trick with time in programs like this or Adobe Premiere is the last two numbers aren't actually milliseconds, they're frames. So you might as well go to frames. So we're going to hit frames. And then we said we have 18 frames per second, so if we did 2 frames per picture, that would be 18 divided by 2, or 9 frames per second. 
So we're going to make each of these worth two frames. And then you hit change. Now you can see there's big gaps this time. So what you need to do is you need to click away and then select all again. So control A. And then you need to go up to edit at the top. And there will be a delete gaps button. And that will compact your clip so it's all together like this. So now when you hit play, and I'll make this bigger, it's going to animate everything. And you can see it's animating pretty quickly. Those photos are just over one second long. So for you, you're going to have a lot more photos, and it should make for a longer clip. Now, if you want to do something like add a title in Windows Video Editor, there's an actual button that says Add Title Card. For here, you have to go to Cut, and there's titles up here. So you could add a title at the start. So let's do uh, Jitter. So I'm just going to drag Jitter here, and I'm going to put it over top on the second video. You have multiple video layers in this type of program. And then we're going to go back to Edit so we can see it. So cool, this is what it is. Now what I want to do is I'm going to actually move my frames here out. And if you have a lot of frames, you just zoom out using the zoom and then you can select them all by dragging across. And once you do that, you can move the title in and then you can move your frames up against the title like that. And now you can see you have a 3D title to start your video and then it starts. So again, this is essentially done. If you want to add audio, you just drag it in from wherever up to the media library and then you can put it in here. Audio is on the bottom, video is on top. And you can see audio one, video one, etc. here. And then once you're ready to finish it, you go to deliver and then you can export it using this. I usually use YouTube, but you can use custom as well. You just pick a name, pick a location. So we'll do photos again. Test two. You want to render it as a single clip. And then for video, QuickTime is a good format. There's also MP4 and Kodak is fine to be there H.264 is fairly standard keep it at 720 and then you can go to audio and that should be ACC if you added music and then just make sure under video that your frames per second is 18 it should automatically do this and once you have all that set and you've picked your title name and stuff you can hit add to render queue and it should pop up on the right now in the render queue, you're going to hit render all, and you'll see it go through and render it. And now up here, you see it says completed, so it's done. So if I go to photos now, we have test two. And there you go. So that's how to make a stop motion clip using DaVinci Resolve. Um, really, if you're doing a simple one, Windows Video Editor might be easier because it's so simple. The part where DaVinci Resolve comes in is if you want to add audio or stuff over top, the multiple layers helps. Whereas Windows Video Editor, you have a single layer of videos and then your audio is kind of confusing. So, so this is big. If you want to add audio, this will be a better program for it. The only trick is it won't be 10 frames per second. You're likely looking at 9 or at 12, but that's okay. <laughs> so that is how you set up your um, stop motion videos.